You've been speaking to some presidential candidates, and of course, there's a legion lineup of presidential candidates. I'm not looking for any kind of endorsement or anything, but what are you talking to them about? Well, I'm talking to them primarily about national security. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that this is the main issue right now. It's the issue that's head and shoulders above any other, and it is America and the nations of the earth for the first time turning their back on the Jewish state of Israel, but also giving Iran, the leading state sponsor of terror, the access and a pathway to nuclear bombs and enriching them to the point that they will be a trillion dollars terror state. Are you talking to some candidates who are saying, you know what, and do you believe them if they're saying, I'm going to tear up that agreement? Yes, I do believe that they're going Mm -hmm. to tear up that agreement. But what history has proven is that the only way you can stop a rogue nuclear program is through military means. If that has been accomplished successfully three times in recent history, and that's what needs to be done. We have the capability and the equipment to be able to take out Iran's nuclear program today. We should have. President Bush should have taken it out. Barack Obama should have taken it out. The opportunity would be for the next president on day one to put the plan in place to remove the nuclear threat from Iran. It is a significant threat and do it on day one. That isn't starting World War III. That is ending World That's War III. That's ending World War III. I get that. I totally do. I spotted an article by David Limbaugh online here very recently, actually today. And I just want to read a paragraph and get your response because America, in fact, the world is intrigued by this billionaire businessman who's come on the scene and has taken all the headlines, taken the headlines away from politicians who've been in politics a lot of years. The headline is The Establishment Birthed Donald Trump. It's by David Limbaugh. People are dehydrated and he's their gator aid. That's an interesting way of putting it. And Limbaugh says this, and I want your response. He says, it's hard to overstate Americans' concern for the state of the nation. Horrified by President Obama's Sherman-esque march through America, they are tired of hearing that nothing can be done. They are through with empty promises and from establishment politicians. He continues, every other week, we continue a new existential threat to the nation, threats perpetrated or enabled by Obama and Washington establishment, but the establishment meets these perils with barely disguised indifference. And you told me as you sat down here to the studio that we couldn't have a bunch of more inept leaders at the most important time in history. Well, it's true. We have From we have John the- Boehner to Mitch McConnell to some others. Explain what you meant. Well, that's right. We have the worst leaders in place and positions of power in Washington, D.C. at the worst possible time mm-hmm. in world history because we are looking at some of the greatest terrorists the world has ever known having access to the most powerful nuclear weapons the world has ever known. And on a daily basis, they scream death to Israel, death to America. They've done this for decades. Mm -hmm. I take them at their word. Absolutely. Could could Barack Obama and our Republican leadership think the Ayatollahs insincere or the president of North Korea? These individuals have negative plans toward Israel and toward the United States. And what we have seen on any number of issues, I think Donald Trump, for instance, has captured people's attention on this issue of immigration, Mm -hmm. particularly from illegal immigrants. And there is a reason why people are listening to what he is saying. George W. Bush and the Republican-controlled Congress passed a $700 million bill to build a fence on America's southern border. It wasn't for lack of legislation. It wasn't for lack of resources. It was for lack of political will that that fence didn't get built. We have seen that that's a terrible problem for the United States. Now we have far worse problems because now America is paying people for from some of the most dangerous parts of the world to come to America. And when they come to America, recent statistics say that those coming to America from the Middle East, almost all of them are Muslim. When they come to the United States, almost 92% are on food stamps. And we have those on Medicaid, I believe, are almost 75%. And those on cash assistance programs are almost 70%. In other words, this is a huge cost to the taxpayer to bear, and it continues. Well, I saw a headline, and it ties in with what you're saying, and the headline was, 
and you and I can address this better than most people. Before welcoming thousands of Syrian refugees, we should consider what Somali immigrants have brought the U.S. And you and I were talking off air. We're in the Twin Cities area. We have, I think, 100,000 Somalis since the late 80s, early 90s. Bill Clinton brought 20, 30,000 here in the 90s. We know what a community like that who comes from a country with no government the Syrians are coming from a country of no government any longer. And you talked to me just a little bit before we started about the delusion of multicultural and multiculturalism refugees. This really isn't about refugees. Some of these people from the Syria or other places, they're not even refugees. But you and I have learned the hard way that if these refugees are, whatever you want to call them, are from an unstable country, they're bringing instability here. Well, that's right. Here in Minneapolis, we are the epicenter of recruitment for the Islamic State Mm -hmm. because we have the high Somali population. We had the very first two Americans who were killed fighting on behalf of the Islamic State were from Minnesota, from the Twin Cities area. We have all sorts of terrorist financing cases coming out of our state. We have recruitment coming out of our state. This is something that is ongoing and continues. And there is virtually no vetting process for people coming from Somalia into the United States. In fact, at a certain point, it had to be admitted that 80% of the immigrants from Somalia were here illegally. 80%. It is a sham. It is an embarrassment. And those who are fleeing into Europe right now as we speak, less than half are from Syria. Mm -hmm. And there's a big black market going on right now with the sale of phony Syrian passports because if someone can show that they're from Syria, then they gain entrance to any country in Europe. But people are very well acquainted with that tragic economy picture of that little three-year-old boy face down in the water. And they say, we must have a humanitarian response. That was a terrible tragedy. But the fact is, that boy's father and mother were in Turkey. They weren't from Syria. They were from Turkey. The father wanted European-style welfare benefits. He wanted somebody to pay for the dental care for his kids. So he put his wife and his five-year-old and his three-year-old in a boat knowing full well how dangerous that would be. They couldn't swim. And the father put them on to seek welfare benefits. And that is happening all across with these migrants that are going into to Europe. And it isn't women and children. Almost 75 to 80% of these migrants are males, working age yeah. males. And a report just came out today from a Turkish official warning Prime Minister David Cameron of the UK that two out of every 100 migrants, two out of every 100 are actually part of the Islamic State. They are terrorists posing as refugees. If we know that two out of 100 are terrorists, why in the world wouldn't you just cut that off? Once they have a European passport, they can come to the United States, and they will. Again, this is kind of national suicide. I mean, well, it is, of course. Every nation has a duty and responsibility to the citizens of their country, to the citizens of the United States, so they know that they are safe and they know they are protected. That is the first duty of government to secure the safety of its people. And our government has failed us, Democrat and Republican alike. Democrat and Republican alike.